Okay, today we've got a boring video just on how to convert regular water-soluble peptides into an oil-based solution, even if they have extra filler, as these two do. These are two standard retail uh, 5 milligram bottles of a peptide with probably mannitol or something to fluff that up and disperse that. And we will be solubilizing that and in oil solution. Remember with these oil-based conversion kits you can only go up to one milligram per milliliter of a peptide. Now for most peptides that's just fine but anything higher than that in concentration so 50 milligrams, 25 milligrams, 100 milligrams per milliliter if it's not oil soluble you're going to have to use the hydrogel kit or some other solution. So this is good for specific things such as oxytocin, I, ipamorelin, I can never pronounce that correctly, but just uh, peptides that are low volume per milliliter and hard to solubilize in oil, but also act too quickly. So say this was five milligrams of oxytocin, we want to extend the half-life from like eight minutes to 24 hours, this is how we do it. What we have inside a couple of syringes to transfer with a drawing needle a ventilation needle we'll get to that in a moment two sealed sterile amber vials solvent mixing bottle a little too good a job on the vacuum and 25 milliliters of thick slow releasing castor oil. all right so step one we want to solubilize this peptide in the clear solvent first and it needs to be completely solubilized if it's going to work with the oil. So since this is enough solvent and antibacteria and so forth to solve 25 milliliters of oil or even maybe even up to 30 milliliters we're only going to use about a third of this You want to think about what kind of percentage your overall total is going to be in milliliters. If we're only going up to 10 milliliters, we don't want to use a crazy amount of solvent because, as you know, benzyl alcohol, antibacterials, they sting a lot when, when injected. So we want to keep that on the, on the low side. So instead of, okay, so we're going 10, so I'm just going to go for now and this is a lot but what this is is this is not all benzyl alcohol this is a mix of things and we're just going to start with one milliliter and we're going to see how that goes first and the reason it's a little bit of guesswork is because various peptide companies let me use this Various peptide companies will use different items to fluff up their product and to distribute the weight evenly. What do they call that? Hydrolyzed and stuff. So it's in mannitol. Sometimes there's even a little bit of collagen in there. Yeah, we'll just use the... I'm just going to break this up so that it'll move. And we'll have to sacrifice a little there. And we'll get the rest of that at the end here. I'll show you how. Any leftovers are easy to get out. Do the same thing with this one. Just break it up. Everybody thinks you're going to destroy the peptide. Eh, go easy. A couple little breaks. Empty it out. Well, what I should have done, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to do just a quarter of a milliliter just because I screwed up. So learn from my mistake here. I forgot this could get stuck in there. And we're going to roll that around and get our remnants out of there. I turn on my inner Bob Ross here. Soothing voice, slow process. This is anabolic ASMR. Oof, they've got a bunch of mannitol in there. Okay, that's as good as I care to wait. 
I'm going to transfer that to the other side here. And we're going to do the same thing, just to get the remnants out. And you don't have to do this. I'm just a little bit of a hoarder, and I don't want to lose any. So that gets most of anything left out of there. There we go. That's okay. Now, yeah, they've got a crap load of mannitol in there. But what we're going to do to help this solve, because you can see it's all just... Oops, get in the shot here. It's all just a little bit in the corner, and it's already starting to go opaque and a little bit translucent. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the lid on, because this is flexible. We can... I've got a bowl of warm water from the microwave, and that's all it is, just water in a bowl. And we're just going to set that down in there and swirl it around with that heat. Get in there. Like I say, if it won't go into solution, into the solvent alone, then it won't stay in solution in the oil and solvent. The solvent's what's keeping it in solution the entire time. And don't be afraid to do stuff like this where you're going to heat a little bit. If you're using a sealed, a sealed sterile vial, it's a little different process and all. You need to vent it when you do this so that the air doesn't pop the top off or crack the vial. It's getting there, but we're going to need more. We're going to need more solvent. That stuff is just too fluffy. If you order straight from a wholesaler, do another quarter mil. I don't want to overdo it. If you order straight from a wholesaler, oh, here, that's fine. There, we can vent it that way too then you can get pure peptide that doesn't have any mannitol or any anything else in it. In fact, they prefer to send it to you that way because then you know, it's just less of a process for them. The advantage to that is that you don't have this sol solubility issue, but the disadvantage is that oftentimes the product is not as well defined and uh, oh, well refined and it can have like some un like chunks of uh, non broken up powder just where it's stuck together and has a little moisture well I sure picked the right one didn't I so so far we have got one and a half cc's of solvent This is just one I put together for example. No, we're at. Actually, we're at two, so I'll go two and a half. My bad. Stubborn stuff, man. But that's why I wanted to make this video to show you what it really takes. Oh, get you know, I will say this about the hydrogel. The hydrogel is a lot easier to work with. There's one step, dump your peptides in it, mix it up. you got to mechanically stir it a little bit. As dumb as it looks, this ain't, the bad, ain't a bad option. Just stir it up. But the disadvantage to it is that it's a little bit more finicky when it comes to um, how quickly it dissolves and spreads in your body. And by that I mean you could take a subcutaneous shot of half a milliliter and it's sitting there dissolving as it should and then you can go take a hot bath and now that as we're seeing here with things dissolving can have that effect too and you'll get a big uh, a quicker release of the product then so Man, this is not wanting to solve. See, this is your option. You can either use hydrogel, which is a lot easier to work with. You can use this oil-based for this kind of thing. Or you can take it straight water-based and get almost nothing out of it. So water-based is the easiest to work with, but also you don't get 
the best results with certain things, say like with oxytocin or IGF-1 native, the 70 amino acid version. So this is what that's for, is to make those products actually live up to their potential and release slowly over time. Okay, well, I'm going to call that what we do have. Let me see if we've got that in the shot. Ah, it's just hard to see through the lighting there. But it's fairly, fairly well resolved down at the bottom there. All right. This castor oil is so thick that it's hard to tell. How full the bottle is because it takes it a minute to yeah. I don't know if you can see that but there's a little more concentration here at the bottom so we're gonna get these to blend in there's 10 milliliters roughly so a little less than 10 milliliters and a little more than two milliliters, I think two and a half milliliters maybe. So we might be just slightly over our calculations. So forgive me for not doing this a little more precise, but I kind of wanted to mimic like how a person might just do it on the fly as I would if I was buying a kit like this. So I want to make it realistic. I'm actually going to pick up as much of that other stuff as I can. And actually the heating will really help help that mix in better I don't like to do it with the oil on there but there we go and this isn't always even a necessary step but this time boy when you get a stubborn one they're stubborn it is what it is so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these over transfer this over and I need so here's where this ventilation needle comes in handy poke that through Whoop, there I'm fasting you'll have to forgive my shaky hands mills Whoop. transfer it a little easier to work with come on with this needle vent still in there and you can just let that sit for a while eat your bowl of water swirl it around this stuff is extra stubborn and that's like I say one of the reasons why I wanted to show you because this is what happens from peptide places oftentimes is that there's the target product but there's a whole lot of extra so if this is supposed to be five milligrams this whole puck was up to here that's it was probably 200 milligrams of fluff and five milligrams of target product I've discussed all that before of course there we go yeah that's doing better I'm gonna warm up this bowl of water one more time get it nice and hot swirl this around oh yeah it's doing much better already good so I'm gonna do that I'll be right back I started off with about three milliliters of solvent in here and when I when these kits go out they go out with six mils this was just for this example but I have got that whole three mils in there and honestly it doesn't like to solve real well once it's blended but I thought we better get it into a mix as opposed to just letting it sit on the sides of the bottle there's probably oh I don't know bits and pieces still left in there not much of the whole but there's pieces that don't want to come off the side of the bottle so if we're slightly under on our volume we should be pretty close to accurate on our concentration our milligram per milliliter now you have to understand that being in solution is different than being evenly distributed if I let this sit overnight even though it's it's still pretty cloudy but if I let this sit overnight and most of the solids have settled, we're obviously not in solution. But we'll find that out. In the meantime, 
what I'm going to do with the hydrogel you got to let it sit overnight to fully solve with this not the case whatever's in solution is in solution what's outside of solution is outside of solution so I'm actually going to just take a test shot I know what this feels like side effect wise in its different forms so we'll give that a run and we'll see how this comes out by feel now obviously I can't show you uh, me taking the shot but I've just taken the shot and if it is not in solution in general and if what we're seeing here is not just a little bit of remnants of mannitol then I will feel a facial flush I will feel my heart race palpitations stuff like that so I'm gonna give it a few minutes and see what happens but all in all I think we've got a cloudy but successful solution boy did it take a minute but that's what we're working with sometimes the thing with this is is with IGF-1 native, not LR3, IGF-1 native, and oxytocin, which I'm not saying that's what this is, this is just, you know, demonstration peptide, but both of those will give a very strong anabolic effect under the right circumstances if they have time enough in your system to do their work. So that's why I created this uh, peptide kit was for items like that, that have a very short half-life to extend them to make them more viable to lower the side effects frankly because with this particular peptide the side effects can be pretty annoying if it hits you all at once but if it's spread out over time you feel fine you just feel uplifted a little bit and I'm not feeling any of the negative side effects not having any facial flush anything like that I would say that it is in solution satisfactorily and that's what this is for now when these ship out see we've got half of the oil left generally I would have had twice the volume of solvent in there and that's what you get with the kit still got a, a bottle here that's sealed and it's enough to do 20 milliliters in these vials or if you want to stretch a little bit or you got stuff that's easy to work with but generally you'll do about 20 milliliters so yeah, no facial flush, no issues, no anything. So, yep, we're good. That's in solution. That's good. Anyway, that's the gist of it. That's, this is worst case scenario, but having a bowl of hot water and your main solvent mix that you're mixing this in or if that's here that's a nice trick and sometimes you're not going to get every little bit out of there that's just all that crap they put in there that sticks to the walls you know so it's rare that it sticks that bad it's rare that it's that hard to solve but it must be down to the type of filler that they added to that to distribute it evenly anyway that's it that's the whole process and that's about worst case scenario. So there you go.